Welcome again. Right now we are at John chapter 11, verses 1 through 44. This is a, just a awesome and amazing portion of Scripture. This is talking about the death and resurrection of one of Jesus' friends, Lazarus. So let's get right into this. Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus from Bethany, of the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary who had anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother, Lazarus, was sick. The sisters, therefore, sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he for whom you have great affection is sick. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this sickness is not to death, but for the glory of God, that God's Son may be glorified by it. Now, if you, a lot of Christians today, they like to do these little, they like to take one little scripture here, one little verse here, another verse here, one passage here, one passage there, and build a whole doctrine on it, okay? Notice Jesus said that the sickness of Lazarus was not to death. So <laughs> some of these Christians, they're, the way they interpret scripture, they would say, well, Lazarus is not going to die. Lazarus is not going to die. Jesus said it's not to death. But we all know the story. Lazarus died, okay? So again, you have to read the scripture in its full context. Let's not just take one verse or one half a verse here and one little passage there and make a doctrine on it. Let's read the whole thing and take it all for what it says. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When therefore he heard that he was sick, he stayed two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let's go into Judea again. Now, some of you are praying about something, and it seems like God is not answering. It could just be that God is just waiting for the right time, okay? That's what we learn from the scripture. Jesus didn't always, always respond to people asking for him to come to heal, you know, right away. He didn't always respond to these, these kind of requests right away. And here is a good example of that. Verse 8, the disciples asked him, Rabbi, never forget, Jesus was a rabbi. The Jews were just trying to stone you. Are you going there again? Jesus answered, aren't there 12 hours of daylight? If a man walks in the day, he doesn't stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if a man walks in the night, he stumbles because the light isn't in him. He said these things, and after that, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going so that I may awake him out of sleep. The disciples therefore said, Lord, if he's fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death. But they thought that he spoke of taking rest in sleep. So Jesus said to them plainly then, Lazarus is dead. I am glad for your sakes that I was not there so that you may believe. Nevertheless, let's go to him. Thomas, therefore, who is called Didymus. Now, if you see a little asterisk there, we'll go down to the bottom of the page. Didymus means twin. So Thomas was a twin. So Thomas said to his fellow disciples, let's go also that we may die with him. Now, Thomas wasn't very optimistic there. So when Jesus came, he found that he had been in the tomb four days already. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about 15 stadia away. Now again, you see a little mark beside stadia. Stadia, it says down here, is about 2.8 kilometers or 1.7 miles. So, many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. Then, when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary stayed in the house. Therefore, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. 
Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will still live even if he dies. Whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ. That's the Messiah, the Mashiach, God's son. He who comes into the world. When she had said this, she went away and called Martha, her sister, secretly saying, the teacher, that mean, that's the rabbi, is here and is calling you. When she heard this, she arose quickly and went to him. Well, I would rise quickly too if I were Mary. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was in the place where Martha met him. Then the Jews who were with her in the house and were consoling her, when they saw Mary, that she rose up quickly and went out, followed her, saying, She is going to the tomb to weep there. Therefore, when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews weeping who came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They told him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. The shortest verse in the Bible. The Jews therefore said, See how much affection he had for him? Some of them said, Couldn't this man who had opened the eyes of him who was blind have also kept this man from dying? Jesus therefore again groaned in himself, came to the tomb. Now it was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Didn't I tell you that if you believed, you would see God's glory? So they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. Down here it says, the NU manuscripts omits the place where the dead man was lying. Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you listened to me. I know that you always listen to me. But because of the multitude standing around, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! He who was dead came out, bound hand and foot with wrappings. His face was wrapped around with a cloth. Jesus said to them, free him and let him go. One of the great stories of the Lord. This is just awesome. I mean, it's not much more I can add to this. This is very self-explanatory, and this is very much blessing me just as reading this. I pray that you are blessed just as much as I am blessed by reading this. As again, thanks again for listening. And as always, seek him with all your heart, okay? Pray, and I pray, that every one of you, will have a heart that is circumcised, that the stony, the hard heart is torn away, is cut away from you, that you would have a soft heart, soft toward the Lord, okay? And as you allow God to circumcise your heart, you will see things that you have never seen before. You will have the love of God in you. Now, does that mean that the love of God is what other people think the love of God is? No, 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 no. The world's definition of love is a lot different than the, than the Lord's definition of love. Don't forget that. God wants us to love him, which means to obey him, which means not to be concerned, not to do our will, not to do things because it makes us feel good, because it's what we want. No, we do things because that's what God wants us to do. So be blessed and be fruitful in all of your works, in everything you do. Be blessed and multiply 
as God blesses you in, in your works of serving him and seeking him. Call upon his name and he will show you, he will show you great and mighty things, such as if you were to tell some people, they wouldn't even understand it. Thanks again for listening.